Right guys, it's my grandson's 21st birthday on Saturday and we're, we're going out for a meal, just me, my husband, him and his girlfriend and his mum and dad um, because he's having a, a big party, a, a big do on the 5th of April. We couldn't get in, we couldn't find a function room for any closer to his birthday but that's fine. So I'm making a cake to take with us when we go out for the meal for his birthday, but it won't be as big as the one I'm making him for his party. I'm making a two tier one for his party. So this one, I'm using a vanilla cake recipe, not my usual recipe, but the other one that I use. For a lot of birthday cakes, uh, because I, I just love this recipe, um, I love how it rises I love the texture of it and I really don't know why I don't use it more often I use the other one because it's stuck in my head it's delicious the other one that I use with all the sugar and the milk I love that recipe as well but to make a big cake which is what I'm making a biggish round cake which is I'm doing about an eight nine inch um, I use this because it's just delicious um, but it's nice to just chop and change with them sometimes and keep your hand in and just do another kind of cake so for this I want 200 the main reason is the other cake is so easy I just know it off by heart bang it all in done this one you have to put a little bit more effort in but it's delicious so you want 225 grams of butter, stock, margarine, perfect for cakes, which is what I use. So where the other one's more milk and sugar, this one's more butter, margarine, whatever. So it's 225. in the bowl with 225 225 grams of sugar I'm using caster sugar but if you've only got granulated sugar in use granulated sugar don't go out especially to buy um, caster sugar because granulated sugar is just as good really um, not only that somebody told me that you can put your if you can be bothered, you can put your granulated sugar in your food processor and grind it down to caster sugar, which I've yet to try. Right, now you want to beat those together until it's nice and creamy. recipe will make you a good eight inch uh, layer cake in two eight inch tins but I want I think it's 10 inch mine it's uh, silicone and because I only have one of this size I do it in two parts so I'll do this layer and then I'll do the other layer the same recipe it's quite a big silicone this don't, I mean it's been used and used I've had it donkey's years I've tried to get all that off, I can't but mark my words be assured, it is washed <laughs> it's just been used that, that many times and I, I can't find one anywhere, it's a German make that and I can't find a silicone anywhere as good as that one and the same size so, so for me say a 10 inch I'm having to do it in two different lots so I'll do one layer in that and then when that's done I'll do another that size for, with this recipe so this you want 210 grams 
of self-raising flour. self-raising flour and you want 25 grams of corn flour and it's the corn flour makes this cake the texture that it is and it's a lovely texture. So, and a teaspoon of baking powder. Now then, you've creamed your butter and your sugar. And now what you're going to do is, you want four eggs, four large eggs. So now, I start by adding one egg mixing that in this is one of the reasons I don't use this recipe all the time because it's so much faffing about, but if you can be bothered to make it, it's delicious. Beat that egg in. Then to that, you're going to add some of your dry ingredients. Mix again. So you're going to alternate your eggs and your dry ingredients. Until you've got all your eggs in and all your dry ingredients. Another egg, that's three eggs in. So that's all my dry ingredients in now. And one leg left. So when you've added your last egg, you need to now add three tablespoons of milk. I'm using whole milk. You can use semi-skimmed if you like. teaspoon of vanilla so with your last egg you add three tablespoons of milk 